We are here with uh, Roberta Sneveca, the director of Snow Shelter. And uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Roberta. It was a pleasure to have you here. Hello. So uh, here at Short Days, we'd like to ask you know, the directors about uh, their personal experience and how their short films were born. So uh, I wanted to ask you first, uh, where did you get the need and idea to shoot this film? Well, when I started this, to write this film in 2014, and uh, at that time, like there was this uh, Maidan events in Ukraine, and uh, here in Lithuania, we were kind of the atmosphere was kind of dark because of that. Because, as you know, like Lithuania also has this like long history with uh, Russian oppression. So these events kind of struck us too, like everybody was talking about it. And from that, uh, I wrote this film, you know, about uh, some, some post-war like uh, environment. Yeah, uh, I even, I really love the film. Like from the first frame, uh, I think I got uh, uh, really into it, like uh, I've been absorbed by it, and um, uh, I also love that this. Uh, uh, let's say that I don't want to say post-apocalyptic, but this um, idea of projection in a future that uh, is really obscure. And um, what I really like, what I, really, I said is that the, the characters uh, reminded me of. Uh, a Russian writer, which uh, is Dostoevsky, like this idea of uh, uh, coming from the underground. Um, tell me about uh, the character, how you develop the character, and then after we will uh, ask you some questions about technical. Well, my character was made like kind of according to me, like mm -hmm. it's my like you know personal experience in, in, in some way. Like I, I wanted, like this film has two parts, so I wanted to make it half half about surviving, and other half about the character becoming dark, you know, the anti-hero. And you know, in a short film, you don't. I, I didn't want to develop it too much, so it is kind of a sketch, you know. But you yeah, have uh, like a scene at the end where. There's some sort of a glimpse of light, you know, a glimpse of memory for this character. It's like he's, uh, he's processing his emotions and past life through that memory. And in a way, this makes him look uh, more human, you know. You tend to empathize more with him when you see that scene. So what was the point in screenwriting of uh, inserting a scene like that? What did you want to suggest about, uh, you know, the character and... Also, of course, yeah, you told it like I wanted to make him human. I wanted to make him that he's not like he had this past life, this apartment which was okay, and then it was ruined, then his life was ruined, and that's why he wants to make it, uh, he wants it back, and he does it in a you know bad way, like hurting other people in a way, but you know, no. Has reason, so. How do you feel about uh, you know this film coming out in 2020, which like, is a very weird year? <laughs> like really weird. Like uh, like like uh, I had a lot of reviews. Like telling like what the hell you predicted that like <laughs> these things are happening now. So yeah, I feel that uh, I feel weird. Like predict the future in a way, but it's like, you know, in filmmaking, that's it. Yeah, um, I have to say one thing, uh, the last scene for me was really incredible when I watched it, like, say, this film uh, is really special, so I want to congratulate you, it's a hugely um, magnificent craft of the cinematic moment which uh, uh, brings a new uh, perspective, a new light to a really dark uh, short film, uh, which is something that I also like. It's not that I liked it only for the end, but it's the end is a 
bigger perspective. And um, regarding uh, the technical part, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, how you worked on it, uh, and what's, uh, what it's animation. It's the only animation project of this selection, and uh, I would like to talk a little bit about it. Sure, the first was first live action shooting in a studio, in a dark studio. And we shot every scene the actors uh, with costumes, with some like basic props that they can hold, or like you know, and lights. And then we animated over it and with the backgrounds like under it. So it was kind kind of difficult. It took us like to maybe two years to do post production. Of course, it's like not full time because we have other jobs. It was like a passion project for us. Work on our free time, and yeah, and it's like the technology and animation technique is called rotoscoping. It's like we're not the first ones, of course, it's used many, many times. Like, even in I always I wrote, I wrote this film when I was writing, I mean, I, I, now I knew that I'm making this in this way, like, it, it was the choice from the beginning, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I really liked uh, like the, one thing that I really liked about uh, is that you can feel the weather somehow. Also, the sound design really well crafted. All the uh, setting is really well crafted, so you can feel you're there. You're actually there. I, I can feel cold. I can feel, and there is, I don't know. It's a shot that I really love, and I want to congratulate you again. Thank you. Technically and artistically. Yeah, so, the sound design, like the sound director Julius, is he comes from live action cinema, like as mainly all the people I come from live action cinema also original, like not original, but you know I, I finished the film studies with like live action, but not animation. Animation was always like a secondary thing to me. So that's why we always approach it like as a film, as a live action, but not as an animation. So. Like the sound director has had to make it like seem like it's real, not like it's like emphasized in some like weird way. Like we never thought that it's an anime. So. I have one last question for you. Um, this uh, you know this night is about uh, films that uh, kind of ponder about the theme of loneliness and alienation. And of course, Snow Shelter is a lot about this, you know, about having lost something and then feeling, in a way, uh, out of every possibility of community again with people. Everybody's against each other and there's this uh, harsh climate, which is the symbol of, you know, war and every kind of conflict human can have. And people are one against each other. I wanted to ask you... Um, in, in your perspective, what was the urgency to, you know, tell a film like that? Uh, uh, why do you think it could be important to have uh, these kind of characters that are not bidimensional, you know, they're not moralistic, they're not trying to teach you anything? Well, you know, there's, like, I couldn't say that there's some urgency. That's my personal experience, because I felt, in, in some points in my life, I felt like this, so it's kind of also my my personal reflection, you know, on that is when you turn like uh, 30 something and your friends like have families and like uh, to find your friends, like this alienation and loneliness like becomes like a topic for you. Depends how you live, you know, but you kind of feel more distant from your friends, from your family, and this, this is why I wrote Snow Shelter, probably. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. So, th thank you very much for this conversation, for your, uh, you know, your interesting answers, and to get us, uh, to lead, let us know uh, something more about how this short film was started. And I uh, uh, really hope the audience will like it. And, uh, I don't know, good luck with your future work, I guess. Uh, yeah. where, where are you headed now? I'm... Now I'm making like uh, fully animated film without uh, any, you know, live action shooting in the background. So, so I'm doing this now. So 
that will be my second film, and uh, we'll see where I go from there. Maybe like a live action again, because I want to, you know, go back and forth. And yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah. It's all right. Good luck for everything. Then we are waiting for uh, for the next work. And yeah, thank, thank you for you. being Thanks with much. us. It was really a pleasure to talk with you and to discuss part of what I want to talk about. Thank you for coming here and for giving us some of your time. And uh, congratulations again.